Hi everyone, and welcome to Saturday. I hope you're doing well. I am doing reasonably well. I've had quite a productive week this week. I'm in Durango still. Um, I've been here for about four weeks now, and I thought today I would just sit down and do a sit down talking video with shots over the top so you don't have to look at my face for the old thing. Brilliant. Um, talking about a subject that I was kind of thinking about while I was walking along yesterday, coming home from Oxo with an Oxo hot dog in my hand. They are the best, by the way. It's a subject that has been asked on numerous occasions since I've been here. Is it difficult to travel and live in Northern Mexico? Yes, I've only been to Durango so far, but um, what's the word? Spoiler, I'm going to Sinaloa and Chihuahua in the next couple of months. I'm gonna be in Northern Mexico for a few months, basically. And this kind of topic, like it's first impressions, if you like, after four weeks of being here, I will probably readdress this. I'll come back to it later on in the future because, you know, impressions change over time, shockingly. But this today are, is my <laughs> impressions, I can't speak anymore, of whether I think it's difficult to live and travel here. The first thing I'll say is I think the word difficult is kind of subjective because it very much depends on your level of experience traveling and living in Mexico. If you're someone like Finn's Travels, North Van Dan, even the Tangerines, you're not gonna have a problem because honestly, things aren't that different. It's not like this enigma fantasy land with cowboys running around. It's Mexico, you know, things work the same. Buses work the same, OXO is the same. People are pretty much the same. Yeah, they're a little bit more grumpy actually, but that's good because I'm a bit grumpy. If you are someone that hasn't been to Mexico before, I wouldn't probably recommend coming here because at least for a first attempt at Mexico because it will be a bit daunting. It'll, you'll be a bit, not scared, that's the wrong word, but it, it's so far out of your comfort zone in comparison to places like, can't believe I'm gonna say this, Cancun, Puebla, Guanajuato, San Miguel, Guadalajara, Mexico City. It's different. And <laughs> the thing I'll talk about first is language. I can speak a bit of Spanish. It's not that bad. I can get by on a daily basis, right? But I've lived predominantly in Southern Central Mexico for a long time and coming here, there have been a couple of adjustments I've had to make, namely in terms of listening. I don't know what it is. Is it the accent that's a bit different? I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if you know, because I find it very difficult to differentiate accents in Mexico. They all just sound the same to me. Similarly, how you know people who aren't from the UK can't tell the difference between a London accent and a Manchester accent, for example. For me, that's very easy, but for many, it's not. Is it the accent? Is it the speed of speech? Is it the fact that idioms are being used that aren't used in the South or things like that, or just the way of saying things. So a, a silly example is like when I go into Oxo or Starbucks and you, you pay for everything and they say, algamas, anything more? I don't say that here. It's something, 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 todos. Like, is that everything? And then of course your answer changes to yes, rather than no, you don't want anything more. Silly things like that. It's a little bit more challenging, I have to say. The other thing with language is that Previously, I've been able to get by with kind of broken Spanish, if you know what I mean. But here, I've been in a couple of situations, including one yesterday when I had to change a bus ticket. More on that in a second. When I kind of had to really explain something in detail, I have to have more conversations here. So that's a positive because it's kind of developing my Spanish, it's developing my confidence. Basically what happened yesterday, I'm meant to be in Torre Torreon right now, but my Airbnb canceled because they didn't have any water. Brilliant. So that's now next week. So anyway, I had to go back to the bus station and reschedule the bus, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that language thing, it definitely takes you out of your comfort zone and into a kind of new world of just having to, what happened with my camera then? Of just having to get by with, oh, that's really distracted me now. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a little bit more challenging with language. The next point is about the fact that no one comes here. And as a result, Travel research can be tough. So the last videos I've filmed in Durango have been not that difficult to plan because they've kind of been in the center or they've been typical tourist destinations like Paseo de Vel Viejo Oeste, the Wild West place. But subsequent videos are kind of obscure and kind of remote. So finding information in English about those places is tough. Even finding information in Spanish is tough because even though you might find something in Spanish, quite often things are lost in translation when you translate them on Google Translate, or that information that you're finding is 
incredibly out of date. I'm talking like eight, hour, eight hours ago, eight years ago, that's it. So, you know, is that relevant? So you kind of do have to go with a bit of blind faith, if you know what I mean. I just spat all over the camera. Blind faith <laughs> and just hope for the best, you know. But that's what I enjoy. I quite enjoy that style of travel where you don't really know what's going on and <laughs> where you're going. The thing about Durango and possibly the rest of northern Mexico is that there's a major difference. So when I go to places like San Luis or Puebla or all those places I mentioned before, I will get inundated with messages on Instagram, on YouTube, in YouTube comments saying, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. I recommend this, I recommend that. Does that happen with Durango? No, it doesn't happen at all. Well, a little bit, but not to the same degree. Because I feel like even Mexicans don't know anything about Durango or Northern Mexico. And why should they? Because do I know everything about the UK? Have I been everywhere in the UK? Yes, it's a smaller country, but no, I haven't. Have I ever been to Manchester, Newcastle? Never, I haven't got a clue. So why would you expect Mexicans, every Mexican to know everything about every single place in Mexico? It's just not gonna happen, it's unrealistic. So it's no surprise. The thing about um, this, and what I think why people think that every Mexican knows everything, is the fact that, and this kind of ties in with an English lesson I have. I have, had, I have someone in Mexico City, she lives in Texas, and she was telling me about how, for her at least, this might be different if you're Mexican. The education when she was growing up around geography and history of Mexico was immense. Whereas when I compare that with the UK, it's like London, World War II, Henry VIII, that's it. And it does feel like, you know, a lot of Mexicans know a lot about everywhere in Mexico sometimes, but when it comes to Northern Mexico, it's not necessarily the case. So you do have to kind of feel like you're on your own a little bit. I do feel quite distant from the rest of Mexico, which is a bit of a weird feeling. It's distant in a way that is positive because I'm exploring. I'm, you know, venturing out into the wilderness in a way. But at the same time, you know, I can't have conversations with someone that's living in I hate San Miguel de Allende, or somewhere like that, because they've never been to Durango. They would never go to somewhere like this because of that whole danger, safety, is Mexico safe, shocked rhetoric thing. But yeah, so in summary, yes, it is challenging to be in Northern Mexico in comparison to other places in Mexico. But would I do this again? Yeah, well, I've only just started doing it. Would I continue on further north? Yes, I am. I'm going to Sinaloa and Chihuahua in not very long, next month basically, in June. And I'm excited to explore. I'm excited to come further out of my comfort zone. Or should, is it farther? Because it's more about destiny, whatever. Yeah, I'm excited to explore over the next few months. Even though, you know, these places in Mexico, they don't get searched for on YouTube. I could quite easily do a video about San Miguel de Allende and get millions of views. No one searches for Durango. But is that a motivation for me in life? No, it's not. I would rather go to places that I really want to go to and hopefully kind of set the bar or the precedent. That's it. <laughs> it's been a busy week this week. For, you know, Mexico travel, that you can go to places like this, that it's not dangerous, safety, blah, blah, blah. It's just Mexico. And, you know, somewhere like this offers just as much as those other, place, other places. I'm just gonna give up now because I can't speak. I was gonna say one last thing. So as you know, my last video, the travel one, my drone shot up like a rocket, I was gonna call it a Scud missile, into oblivion. I think it's orbiting Mars now, but good news is it crash landed on a building. I haven't been able to get it, but DJI have said I can have a replacement, so they're gonna send it. So you should see the return. Drone Mark II coming in future videos. Bloody brilliant. So um, yeah, next up is a video from a Pueblo Magico. It's kind of a replacement video for a place I was gonna go to, but I couldn't find any information about, as I was saying before. So you kind of have to play it by ear, that's it. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, and let me know what you're up to this weekend. Where are you planning to go in Mexico this year, if you are planning to? And that'd be great, lovely. <laughs> I'm gonna have a fag now, a cigarette, not homosexual. I'll see you soon, catch you later.